This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. Good morning, everybody. We have a walk-in freezer that is running warm. So we are going to go in here and see what's going on. I just checked the controller and it looks like it's been since one o'clock in the morning the uh on the 14th today's the 15th so it's been down for a while i don't know why i'm gonna let this thing calibrate out here i have a feeling we got a leak because it's short cycling the compressor we're zeroed out let's get in here and take a peek and see what's going on got an hvac system here it seems to be working we got line sets going up to the roof there and going across to a little compressor room over there you can hear it kicking on and off let's go out here and see what we got this freezer i'm in super mode which is like way sensitive for a big leak but at least gets me in the general direction let me try cloud hunting mode sometimes that works good sometimes it's better to use the notch feature it just really depends if it's super low because you're far, far away you may only get one or two parts per million that wouldn't normally trigger and getting better as we get closer as you can see here, we go into our alarms. It's obviously high case temp. Go back, go into circuits, go into walk-in freezer, go down to temp, graph that sucker, and you zoom in. We've got quite a area here. So we are fine and dandy in about one o'clock area. And it never came back down and boom, never came all the way down and boom. You can see we're losing refrigerant. Lose, 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 lose. Pretty obvious what's going on here. There's the menstruosity. See oil right there and here. Unless somebody dropped it. Just let that go to rest because it's not obviously doing much. I don't like that wiggling around like that. I want to say it's probably not in here. Batter, it's all gone. Now, even on the low, it's something that's really not liking it. We go in our parts per million, see how strong it is, but that's not going to take the whole thing out, which we don't know how low it really is, but yeah, 50 parts. It's a ooh. What in the heck's going on there? There's quite a bit of oil there. Definitely got one leak there. I don't know if it's just a straighter core or what. We may have to go grab some soap. But we're definitely leaking through the cap because now it's a little tighter and it's not going as nuts. And it's definitely, definitely the cap. We can fix that with a brass cap or we put a new straighter core in, which is how I would do it. All right, so pretty sure this here is probably the air conditioning system you've seen down here in the ceiling so it must be one of these here first time i've been here so i don't know where anything's at unless that one leaks enough to take it out i guess they, that's an awful quick procedure for it to get up to what it's got going on and watch this we're getting a little something there something up underneath there in the uh little rubber boot area that we got to rub through. So we're only hitting four parts per million. That could be just what's floating in the building, which leads you back to how much did we lose? I have no idea. I think what we may end up doing here is start recharging it, get it up and running, see how many pounds I have to put into it, kind of base it off of that everything tends to get ran at bare bone minimum levels that way if there's a leak you know it real fast and you don't lose a lot of refrigerant for nothing you can see they've already made one repair right there so it's very probable that there's other places on some of these this ain't a huge rack or anything like that and so it's not like it's got i bet it's got probably 35 40 pounds in it maybe here this is after i tightened it Let's see if we got much going on that's after tightening it, and the unit's not running. It's not even running. That's as tight as I could get it. 
I'm not big into spraying solution into the valve core, but yeah, they're, oh my gosh. Get a little bit of that on the finger. Watch it. That, that thing's blowing out of there. That is ridiculous. Wow. Well, blow the refrigerant out that way. Let's go ahead and get this core changed. It might have been able to be tightened, but honestly, I don't even want to deal with it. We're just going to change it. What usually happens is that discharge gas, it's just so hot, it just kills these things. Juice our finger here. So I like doing it like that. That way you're not shoving it all in there. And then when you're done, you can always just burp it. Get the residual out of there. Like I said, that obviously the cap's worthless. So we're gonna go ahead and put a uh, brass cap on there as an extra precaution. I'm kind of on a kick on this. And just so you know, those are flat pliers. Now most of you are like, yeah, you're, uh, show me something I've already seen, but there's, I'm still, I get a kick out of that one guy just ran his mouth and he's like, you got on there with channel locks. I got done watching as soon as I seen that. And I'm thinking, bud, get out of the 18th century. And I didn't mushroom that down either. That's what a lot of people do. They crank them down, smash the, uh, the lips on that thing. Then you gotta drill it out and everything else. Total pain to hiney. So we got that. We're gonna go ahead and spray this piece here because I don't like the way that's dark. And flare fittings. I'm just gonna go ahead and, even though I didn't get nothing on it, I'm gonna do it before I kick it on because once it's running, it's too hot, it'll just kind of boil off the we have a low pressure switch on this so it didn't go into a negative that's why i'm not going to change the filter dryer all right let's get this weight in here and see how much we end up using so our discharge side there was at 140 the measuring go down to charging we're going to do manual charging hit enter again weight scale should pop up right there zero on a zero weight. Now you do have to do an update on this um, manifold to get all these features too, just so you know. So we're connected there to the Testo scale, zeroed out, we're on 404A. We're gonna go ahead and kick this thing on. I do not see any leakage signs from any of my big blue. We're connected to our liquid line there. We are having to dump right on the compressor, which kind of sucks, but it's a big boy. We'll go slow and easy we'll be fine unfortunately they i don't know why they wouldn't have put a port back here where the accumulator is at that would have been a better spot for it that way it could have mixed before it got back here but either way let's go ahead and kick that on and go ahead and start adding you can see we already got that's some liquid there that cycle has to looks like crap but to be honest with you that cycle glass over there don't look no better for the refrigeration HVAC guys out there, this fan here, you see these usually on compressors that are used for low temp, the compression ratio. Oh yeah, we're already, did we just go clear already? So right there at four pounds, it looks like we started to go, starting to. So right now what's going on is the headmaster outside is starting to uh, open and close because our pressure's finally gotten up there high enough. It's a 180 pound headmaster out there. It just went through solid, which don't mean a lot, at about 12 pounds and a half. I'm going to stop for a minute, see how it does, because we got to give it a chance to get those evaporator fans on. Oh, so you're going to shut down on me already? That's nice. Uh, I'm going to have to go look and see if it went into a defrost. I assume, since there's no clock here, this must be done by the panel downstairs. Okay, it's in defrost. So we're gonna go enter, manual defrost. This is a tricky one that I never knew how to use because nobody showed me. Hit that and go to in manual mode. Enter, look at that, it's in drip mode. So it's gonna drip for a bit. You go in your setup, you can see when your set points are negative five, defrost, we've got electric defrost, uh, duration's 45 minutes, up down two minute delay, five minute drip time, defrost times, 
number schedules three at one o'clock in the morning, nine o'clock, and 1700, which is five. You got two inputs here on the board, outputs there, alarms, high case alarm 20 degrees, delay of an hour, 45 after defrost, and unfortunately this thing is not on the network as far as I know. So right at about 15 pounds, and we're going back through, and now that we've got, you know, 216 pounds, 216 pounds of pressure on it, I'm looking for any additional leaks. Doesn't like that on high, super, let's try it on high. The systems is, Right, there's one leak, so that's not going to help it none. So add that leak there, plus that one over there, plus I bet there's more. Everybody's like, don't do it in high super mode. You don't need no super mode, high mode. We're looking for a big leak. We're looking for a really big leak. Well, guess what? You can have a bunch of small leaks and have a big leak when it's all said and done. You figure you need a super mode when you're sitting here fighting against the fan that's blowing everything away. Well, I tried tightening it up, and it's still got a little bitty leak there. Let's go ahead and pump this thing down, get that fixed. We've got a receiver valve right here on the back, so let's go ahead and get that done. Okay, you're gonna see we pump down. It's gonna go all nice and empty there. And we'll watch that there. It's the Nylog to the rescue. This repair is brought to you by Nylog. You can pick this up at True Tech Tools and use the discount code SURVIVAL at checkout to save 8% on your total order. Look at that. Get her, get her, got her. And she shut off about two. Well, she's not liking something. That valve's leaking like a sieve. Go figure. Oh, yeah, look at that. We got a leakorama going on here. We'll go ahead and isolate it here. Also, that way we don't have any back pressure coming from other parts of the rack, or not the rack, the other parts of the system. It's not the best looking flare I've ever seen in my life. Well, I guess it ain't too horrible. You can tell it wasn't lubricated on the back side very well. I could redo that with my Navac flaring tool and just do a whole brand new one. Alright, so I screwed that back together, that way we keep all the evaporating uh, refrigerant inside there that way nothing's getting displaced with oxygen we've got the navac nef 6lm this thing is sweet all we got to do is that off clamp it up and we're good to go that's a half inch which we can look right here at the top there's half inch I'm pretty sure that's half inch ain't it is that five h yep that's when it clamps down, that'll be half inch, yep. All right, and then when we chuck it up, it's gonna stop there, boom, slide it on, and good to go. Well, let's watch and see. Put that notch right there on the flare. That way you don't chop off more than you need to. Slowly work our way around and get this thing decimated. Now I've got two different flaring tools. I bought a rigid one here that does okay. It's made for stainless steel and a few other things. It doesn't do too bad. I paid a lot of money for it, and I don't think it's all that great on some stuff, but honestly, the old-fashioned flaring, the uh, deburring tool here usually does just fine. We're gonna put that copper in there just like this. Stainless steel thing's gonna stop it like that right there. We're gonna slide the tool right down to it, right over top of it. We're gonna clamp it in like that. Hit the button. And then it backs itself back out. And she's done. Release it. Pull it straight up. Pull that off. Looks like the perfect flare to me. No rough edges. A little bit of optical illusion there, I think, where I pinched that a little bit, but that's my fault. So we've got a nice flare there. 
Make sure there's nothing inside that edge corner that I didn't get out. Yeah, there was a little piece there. Good, got that. Yeah. That's why you gotta be really careful when you're doing your deburring that you don't get in there and do what I did. But it would help if I wasn't crammed right in between here. So I put a little bit in there. This is refrigeration oil, so it doesn't matter if it gets inside there. The whole reason for it being blue is that it is made out of polyester oil. That's on the back side, so now it's gonna spin like it should. Put her back together like that. Nice mating surface. Screw it together. Go out and grab your torque wrench. But less is more. Usually about 40, 35 pounds, I think, something like that. But the biggest thing is just having a good flare and having it lubricated. Now, if you're watching that refrigerant, it's even though we're there, it's boiling out the whole time. Now we could do a little purge over here to this flare nut over here, but we're gonna be fine. Let's go ahead and open it back up. You don't pull vacuums on this. Um, if you look at my valve here, when you crank it down, it's open to the top side. It's gonna go that direction. This one over here, same thing here. When you crank it down, it's gonna block it down here and you're gonna to go to the receiver. So there's no way to pull a good vacuum on it. So that's why you'd be fast about it and let it boil off. So we've got that opened up. Yeah, now this one here, we can check it. It's got a packing that we can actually tighten if we need to. Like that one's fine. Don't want to get stupid tight, just snug it up a little bit. This one does not have a packing that can be uh, repaired. So unfortunately, luckily, it's got a metal cap that's actually going to seal it. So we're going to back that out. And you can see that it's, I can feel it leaking. <laughs> Sometimes we get lucky and they won't hardly leak at all when you got them back seated. But it's got a little copper ring in there. Tighten that up. There we go, nice and solid. Not seeing anything. Lots of vibration. Like yeah, these two clamps. Let's see if we got anything on it. Got it. I mean, it ain't no 15 pound leak, but that one up there definitely was. I gotta go up on the roof yet and look around up there. Like I said, this thing is pretty slick. You can get this also, True Tech Tools. Navac sent it to me. I've been really happy with it. Depending on what size uh, you're doing, uh, a flare, sometimes you need adjustments. You can do it right here on that right there and that'll adjust how far it goes in. And then uh, when it locks down, you just push that button right there. And it's an orbiting flare. It's got a flashlight right there when you hit the light button. It's got a readout right there. Comes with a battery charger. The battery I've only charged it once. I think that's when I first got it. It's two amp hour. This thing is just crazy how how long it can last. Um, I showed it to our uh, install uh, manager and stuff, and recommended they get it just because it's so simple that it's hard to make mistakes. And I showed them how easy it was, and I think we got one. I'm pretty sure the guy deburs it properly and gets that thing in the place right where. That stops it right there. You just can't do it wrong. And as it starts doing it down, it moves that out of the way. And it's really, really well built stuff. You see the pin there locks together like that. I mean, it's slick stuff. I forgot to show you too. There's a flaring gauge here that guarantees you've got the proper flare. You can see there's an edge there that fits in there, but stops after there. That way, you know that you're actually hitting the right spot. It's actually got a measuring device on the back side but that right here is pretty slick it comes with that little wrench here so anyhow jumping on to what we got going on here the uh, refrigerant we've added is 15 pounds if i had 15 percent for that you're looking at about two and a quarter so you need at least two and a quarter at a minimum 
probably closer to three or four to make sure we stay solid even in the colder weather. Um, I gotta go around and check yet for any other additional leaks just to make sure we've got them all. So it appears that must be the freezer just like you see it downstairs. The freezer's on this side, the cooler's here. Well, that's the cooler. We're gonna scan, like I said, around here just to make sure it's kind of windy. We're gonna make sure there's no 15 pound or better leaks out here, you know? Yeah, we still got that leakage from down below. It sounds, smells like it's kind of hitting it, but I think that's just left over from inside and that's one of the exhaust points. Um, I have no way of getting up that high to where that's at without a lift. There is where that comes down at. You can see it comes across right there where we are. Come over to here and right there it is. So if we were cranking out refrigerant, you would think we'd pick something up. Get a super mode. I don't, I mean, all I can do is put a straight ladder up there, which is not really the safest thing in the world. You would think, okay, if we're leaking bad, it would drip and you would have some oil down here, something. Does this leak pretty quickly, so it looks like it online, on the uh, computer, in the graph. But I think what it's done is slowly gotten low, and then it did its thing. All right, so we've gotten up here anyway. Gotta do what you gotta do. Don't, uh, don't have anything up here at all. So, the only place we got is those two spots that I showed you. Well, I went to the trouble of getting a ladder up there in the rafters. Might as well go ahead and replace the filter dryer while we're at it, too. It's looking less than desirable. Uh, I mean, I guess the more I thought about it, it's flare, so there's no reason to have gotten overheated and made it brown like that. So, let's uh, go ahead and get that changed. Dump the remaining refrigerant in there to uh, for winter charge and get out of here. I have looked everywhere I can look for leaks. I've looked up there, I've looked on the roof, and I've looked across the ceiling. So... Let's finish this up. Let's go ahead and clean this back side up a little bit here. Smooth that around. Hook this up to this end here. Any residual refrigerant should push right through the dryer. I log there. A little bit here. Uh, we could actually bleed a little bit both directions. Not real sure what all we can really show on that, so use your imagination. Not using my torque wrench just because I know I've done it enough times with my torque wrench to kind of know. And I'd rather start light and uh, tighten it up after the fact than tighten it up tight as you can at first. And then once that's the case and you, you can usually can't go any further. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and open up our liquid. Then we're gonna date our flare dryer. Matter's all in there, not seeing any leaks on it. Give it a little more time now that we've got it running. Weighed in about an extra three pounds at first, and I found out my bottle's just about empty anyway, so we're just gonna finish the bottle off in there. So it'll be about 20 pounds. Hard to say if there was anything else. But the, at this point, I'm going to scan the, uh, the box one more time. But with that being completely nothing in there, no hits at all when I was in there, I'm not too worried about it leaking in there. Let's see what we got here. I like that. Sometimes it's easier just to look at the uh, bog. See how fast we drop. So hour and a half 39 of there we really started hanking down right about in there and then we had to shut it off to do some leak checking and stuff so yep yeah, she's doing good if you guys enjoyed the video and you want some more like it please give it a thumbs up check me out on instagram and until next time we'll catch you on the next one later